Welcome back to this little corner of drawing of mine. And I thought this week, let's do something traditional again. And yeah, real traditional because I really started getting into watercoloring again. If you follow me on Instagram or even in some of my recent videos. But uh, I have this new sketchbook that I didn't show you yet. And I had this little sketch that I did in it. And I thought, uh, let's go through it. Let's see how I made it. I have no pants on. So as I said, lately I've been trying out a lot of new techniques, well not techniques, <laughs> and also not new, it's quite traditional, but I really tr try to go back a little bit more towards uh, traditional as well. And uh, I saw quite a couple of drawings that were very illustratory. And by that, I mean that they had these wibbly wobbly lines on the outside. So they didn't concentrate on the super straight uh, industrial design type of lines. And I actually really enjoyed it. And I wanted to try that out. And I did try it in, in, in several different drawings, but I also wanted to see how that might work for uh, cars. Because when I draw cars, I am from somewhere from my inside, I feel like I'm forced and pushed towards doing this industrial designery style. So I thought, okay, let's 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 make it as illustrate illustrative, illustratory, I guess, as, as much as possible. And for that I also I started out straight with pencil. So I didn't do the marker and then lines on uh, well fine liner lines on top of it. No, I went straight to pencil because pencil I stopped using almost totally. I would say 99% of the time I don't use pencil, but I stopped using pencil just about the time when I started doing industrial design. And this takes me a little bit back to the days when I just started drawing and when I was exploring and drawing and when I didn't really know what I was doing and I was going for illustrations and I, I was trying to copy and imitate people and learn more from, from, from the, the sketchers that I knew. And I wasn't in the industrial design style yet. I didn't found that as, as my main uh, passion and interest. So it, it was interesting seeing how I draw with uh, a pencil now, because obviously I do have a lot of those industrial design techniques ingrained in me, So I but I was still trying to step away from that. So I am deliberately, I don't wanna say I was drawing in a bad way, because obviously there is no bad way, but I was trying to not just use industrial design uh, ways of approach to this drawing. And then when I was, and by that I mean, I was like, okay, let me explain a little bit more as well. I, I mean, I didn't set up anything. I didn't do my typical, okay, here is the box. This is how the car would fit in here. No, I went like, okay, I'm just gonna start with one part of the car and just go on from there and, and see what I draw and try to keep the proportions in my head. Obviously that's going to make mistakes, but I, I didn't really care about that. The, the more you do this, the less mistakes you're going to, to, to do as well. So you see many people who can, for example, Kim Jong Ji, I think is his name. G, either way, you will find him. He's the amazing artist who, who just starts drawing a foot and then from the foot he builds the guy and then just the whole giant scene uh, gets created. Uh, and the more you do that, the more correct you can do that. But uh, another thing for me is also I just, I just wanted to, to let loose. I didn't care about if it's super correct or not. And that's what you also see here with my uh, with the fine liner as, as I go in. I don't do those um, deliberate industrial design strokes that you dot, dot, and then connect them or just hover a couple of times in the air and then connect them. No, I very gently just go around and follow each line that I put down before with my uh, pencil. And I don't care. It's not that I don't care. Actually, I am happy that my lines become a little bit wobbly and they're not super straight. And um, it's actually, it's really fun to draw like this. It's, it is, it does give you quite a different feeling and approach than what, especially what I have usually with my industrial designery uh, shapes, but it is, it is really fun. And actually I got this uh, sketchbook exactly with these sort of uh, drawings in mind because it is a mixed media sketchbook, which means that I can do very limited watercolors in it as well. And yeah, as you will see, that is exactly what I'm uh, going for here. So to say something about the car as well, this is a Type 37 Bugatti, and I got it from um, an Instagram channel, Nostalgear, Nostalgear, I guess is the name, and they have it from somebody called Focus on Cars, 
uh, uh, also from Instagram. So if you want to find, I'll link both of these in the description below if you want to look at some really beautiful uh, car pictures. But yeah, I just really love these old cars. Uh, as I said a couple of times before, I'm not necessarily a gearhead. I just really love the aesthetics of cars. I think they are absolutely fantastic looking. And I've been browsing a lot of pictures, like Pinterest has become a, a big friend of mine <laughs> lately. And there were a lot of these really cool, really old um, paintings of cars, especially of, of race cars. And that's sort of, as soon as I saw this Bugatti, I was like, boom, I want to do something in a, in a style as similar as possible to that. And obviously it is not exactly that style because I, I sort of try to imitate or copy that style a little bit with my own sort of style and com coming up with uh, whatever I do. But yeah, in, in the end, I, I had a ton of fun. I had a ton of fun doing this. And uh, to talk a little bit about the process as well, which you mostly know, but I think until now you saw me drawing mostly with a 0.05 uh, size of um, fine liner, and I think I'm using statelers here. And then at one point I switched to the 0 0.2 with which I did the outlines a little bit stronger, or it might have been also 0 0.5. I I do have a range from 0 0.05, then 0 0.2, and 0 0.5. And if I want to go really thick, I have a 0 0.8 as well, but I don't use that uh, so often. But yeah, anyways, after after I I start out with uh, with the uh, finest one because it's something that my mom used to say: if you're cooking, you can always add uh, salt later, but you can't really take salt out. And I, I approach it pretty much the same way with uh, my fine liners. I feel like I can always add extra thin detail if needed, but I can't turn thin detail into uh, thick detail easily. So yeah, that's, that's, that's how I approach it. So I always just start out and do the whole car with my 0 0.05 and just have fun, detail around and then come in with the thicker ones and do the extra layers and make it thicker on the outside or come in with extra black if that is needed. And then in the end, if I see that there's some detail missing here or there, I can always go in and add those little details with a thin stroke. But I don't want to do details bit with, a, with a big, or, or a thicker fine liner because that throws the, the lines off a little bit because it's always important to have thick lines either for the outline or for where you want to make sure that there's shadow and you want only thin lines on the on the details on the inside. You, that, that, that makes your line work really nice and interesting. And here you can see me drawing with a uh, brush pen. I think it's Pentel. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a Pentel brush pen. And I really like uh, this brush pen, but it is also more, it is more fitting for organic work. I have a friend who's really good with this and he does a lot of uh, character work and illustration work with it. I, I, sometimes I'm struggling with it, as you can see it here as well, here and there, but it is, it is quite fun because it forces you to think in a different way. So I already stepped a little bit away from the, uh, as I said, industrial designer is sketching uh, making my lines more wobbly, but then using this brush pen makes it even more, it's not dangerous, but it, it's, it's just, you have to live with your mistakes if you make any, and it's easy to, it's easy to misjudge how one line is going to go with, uh, with this brush pen. So I, I am dreading it a little bit, but I'm also enjoying it at the same time because I'm forced to well, work a little bit outside of my comfort zone. Like this is this is how I like stepping out of my comfort zone. It's, it's very small, tiny steps, but still, slowly I'm going out of it because I'm not super comfortable with this sort of brush pen and I'm not super comfortable with watercolor. But to not totally jump into the, the deep waters, I am drawing an, an, a subject that I really like, cars. So sort of out of the comfort zone at the same time still in the comfort zone. You don't always have to jump into the deepest of water. Sometimes small steps like this are nice. So yeah, and uh, I also like using this Pentel to, to do some extra lines as well, or just do the outline of things. So I don't, just because as I said before, it, it gives this more bite. It makes it a little bit more authentic one one might say even uh, but it is also it, it it is a little bit not cartoony but it gives you this illustrative sort 
of feeling to the to the drawing that you're doing. And as you can see me right here, I, I just noticed that, okay, I need some more fine detail there. So I, I come back with a fine liner and I, I touch up what's uh, necessary. And then I will probably switch back to the pen, uh, the pen brush again to fill in a couple of more dark spots that are needed. That's also what I was trying to to go for a little bit because I really enjoy illustrations that um, not that rely heavily, but are built up with really strong black and white shadowing and and uh, lines in general, because that means that the person who drew those like really understands how shadows work and how volumes work. If you can really explain 3D volumes with just with black and white, and that's why I'm also I'm, I'm sometimes I'm trying to challenge myself also in, in this case to try and explain as much as possible with uh, with darks and there is a difference from what i do generally because yeah i can do line work i'm okay with line work but there's a difference between line work and then really putting a lot of strong blacks somewhere because strong blacks suggest the volume even more and it's it's i feel like it's easier to mess up so to me it tells that the person who uses them i can easily identify if they know what they're doing or not and that's why I'm afraid to use it many times because I know that, yeah, it will be visible that I don't always know uh, what I'm doing when I'm using uh, really, really strong darks. Uh, especially when I'm filling in the, the wheels. I'm also a little bit all over the place and I don't know what I do. So it, that's, that those are the places when I make a mistake. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have to live with it and I can adjust the rest of it and I'm, I'm going to show less spokes. Spikes? No, it's spokes. I'm going to show less spokes because of the mistake I made, but hey, that's uh, that's life. Uh, this is interesting. I do not know why I decided to draw down the number plate as well. I, th I just thought maybe it will make the, <laughs> the whole visual a little bit more authentic looking. But uh, in the end, looking back at this, I was like, yeah, this is cool. If you are interested why I was using that piece of paper throughout uh, the whole drawing, it's just because I do have a bit of a sweaty hand and I very easily can smudge uh, the paper, especially in cases I draw with pencil because I draw with uh, HB pencil and everything uh, HB and B and then if you're going into a numbered Bs, super easy to smudge and I get very dirty paper if uh, I do that. So that's why I always uh, like to put that paper below my hand when I'm drawing over pencil just to make sure that I don't smudge at all. And the eraser is also something relatively new. I think I just started using this eraser a year ago. As I said, I don't use that much pencil, so I don't really have need. I don't really have a need for erasers. But this, I never had these sort of, um, well, it says it's a kneadable art eraser. So yeah, so you can knead it into all sorts of forms which is good because if it gets dirty on one side I just mush it inside of it and then the outside is clean again and you don't always have to rub it you can also just gently touch it and just roll over it and it, it takes out quite a bit of the uh, pencil uh, the graphite so I, I really actually enjoy it since I'm doing a little bit more pencil now I it is it is it comes quite in uh, handy and then I switched to my watercolors and my watercolors are a mix of the Arteza brush set that, uh, well, Arteza colors, watercolors, not brush set, but they are a mix of the Arteza colors and also just uh, Windsor & Newton uh, travel pack that I usually have with me. I was a bit lazy. I didn't want to set up my whole watercolor and I just had some dried up uh, watercolor bits and pieces uh, on a palette and I mixed that with the, the travel set. And uh, yeah, it was actually quite fun. Uh, I tried to use as little water as possible because yeah, as I said, it is mixed media, so it does handle water and watercolor, but it is definitely not uh, made for it. Um, something that surprised me watching back this video because I didn't remember is that I started out with a background I, I could have sworn that I started with, a, with the main theme, which is a car, but it was interesting seeing that, okay, let's, I wanted to get the background out of the way because I feel like using watercolor without proper outlines is a little bit stressful for me. And maybe that was something that I, okay, I just, I just want to get rid of the background because it seems 
the least fun for me. And then when I can draw over uh, the lines, then I'm going to be calm and it's going to be more fun. And uh, yeah, so this the, the rest is basically just uh, drawing within the lines. I try to make, well, make, I try to implement some watercolor tricks, why watercolor is actually good. So you can see on the, the, the nose part of, of the car, I have a little bit of um, color change going from orange to red. Uh, and I also introduced more water on the bonnet as it went towards the stop side, so the, it, you, you get sort of a gradient out of it. I also played around a little bit with the cobblestones, that was also quite fun. Since I had the brown on the car and the red in the seating of the car, and then we had this red, brown, orangey uh, background, I thought, okay, let's, let's keep it as much monochromatic as possible, and let me make the cobblestones also super red, and then I can bring in some different colors and grays and oranges, everything that is within that family or close to it, to play around and add some hints of uh, uh, reds as well. So, yeah, I am not super comfortable yet with watercolor, but I, I am getting there. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at all sorts of uh, videos and I'm just trying to figure out what might work and what doesn't. And uh, this, this is a sketchbook, so it is there for me to experiment, not necessarily to, to draw anything that is uh, fantastically amazing. But yeah, I am having a ton of fun with these. Whenever I have a bit of time to do some uh, traditional work, I, I gladly sit down and do something like this. And I do hope that, hopefully, we can go out and travel more openly again, and then I can take it with me and I can do more uh, outside sketches as well, because those are also always fun. But uh, yeah, that, uh, that was mostly it for this video. And I just wanted to thank you. If, if you're still here and you're still listening and watching, uh, thank you very much for putting your time into this. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you took something away from it. And just in general, if you guys liked this, you know, you know, the hit the like, subscribe, all that, blah, de blah. But as always, the most important part is that you guys have a great time and stay safe and see you next time. Bye bye.